What's happening, my beautiful people? My name is Mike LaBelle. Welcome back to The Playbook. Today is a special upload. This will be the biggest separator. If you're trying to go from good to great, or if you'd like to be at that competitive level, you need the player lock, especially with AI offense. It's limited. Let's be all the way transparent. In FC24, it is limited. You're going to need the player lock, and this is a difficult add-in. It's not brand spanking new, but it does not feel natural or organic. It's gonna take some time. If you have not subscribed, run this up. I prefer practicing the player lock, either going into skill games, which is where you see me now, or playing offline. If you are not in a rotational, you haven't started learning this, mastering the craft, implementing player lock, go into squad battles or go into a skill game and get some repetition under your belt. That's what we're gonna do. In order to utilize the player lock, you're clicking on the left analog stick and the right analog stick at the same time. And then that allows you to move players off the ball. You see what we did there with Rodrigo, okay? And now if you don't like what you see, you can always click the F left analog stick and the right analog stick at the same time in order to return to the passer. So it just allows you to control the receivers. But again, at the higher levels, there's a lot of value in being able to do this. We need a goal for the people. Here we go. You can also trigger a through ball, carve a hall. Can you finish? He does indeed. Welcome to the manual receiver. And this is a bread and butter circumstance. Easy way to introduce the player lock. You got a lot of space to work with. Uh, Graham is off to the races. You can attack that space. That would be your normal choice. And this is where the player lock allows you to look at things differently because you no longer have to challenge those defenders. You're playing a two man game. This is going to be your target player, but you can manually move this player. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Graham, there you go with Janola. He stops his run, which creates a larger passing angle. And the defender now is a little more helpless. There's not the AI assistance. There's not that portion of the gameplay, both defensively or offensively. You've taken that. You've removed it. This is a way to create a larger skill gap. I repeat, a way to create a larger skill gap. It's just not easy. And fundamentally, it's new. It's not going to be something you're used to doing. Passes it to Janola. Janola, now in a bread and butter position. All you got to do is finish, put your foot through it, power at home, and you have your conversion. Gorgeous. Maybe one more time for the speed up. Pull it back, and you'll see what I mean. It changes the way you think of offense. Usually you have to beat a defender. You no longer have to do that. You find the space, the gap, that extra half second major benefit. I love it. I love it. I love it. Active positioning. That's what I've rebranded and named this situation. When you got the receiver, not only does the chance of the pass converting at a higher percentage, but the first touch. The way you receive it, it's just better. A lot of bodies here. Might have been a little bit of an offside trap. You've identified your player. Here we go. It's going to be crowded. But you can take just that little inch this way, inch that way. Wait till you see this run. It's, it's just so beautifully done. Jude's going to find the space with the, the pass. But I'm just saying, in order to keep it on repeat, the importance and the benefit you get from the player lock. Here you go. Look at how Graham receives that pass. It's already out in front of her. That allows you to play the two-man game. Now you got the goalkeeper. Where do you want to slot this? The near post, the far post. Either way, you have that half second. You've created time. And when you're playing at a high level, even an intermediate level, a low level, the game's still about time, patience, cadence, playing at your own pace, being able to control that pace. A lot of value. Near post, open. Again, I love this example. Here we go. KDB. We'll put it in slow-mo. He's going to give it to Jude. Now watch this manual control of the runner. Just, just like peels off. It's so much more natural. You angled your run. How many times have you played this game and you say, offensive players, please angle your run. Crossing, angle your run. Receiving, angle your run. Check to the ball. Give me something. That's how it should look. This is how it should look. Angled the run. Uh, next. This has more buildup, a couple switches of the pitch, which you see frequently done. This is not a tactic video, so we're not going to cover that as much. Mbappe looking for assistance. Can you find some of it? Not so much. Davies out wide. Give us a resurface and a recycle. There it is. Now you got options. It's got to be said, you use the player lock here. I don't know if it was needed. So you've got five offensive players. I wouldn't necessarily say that these deeper offensive players, that it's actually possible to find them. A lot of bodies in front of everything that's happening. But that still leads you with option one, maybe option two, option three. 
You've got dump offs. If you really wanted to, you could probably find Davies again for an option four. Not that you're going to do that. But we see the target. It's here. The player lock is on. Even with a lot of bodies, again, the way you receive the touches, you can force the ball into tight areas with the player lock because the offensive player, again, has a little bit better responsiveness. That's why I call this the active positioning. And you'll see on the reception. Could have been better options. Kind of forces it through, but you still found a gap of space that would not necessarily have normally existed look at this this tiny triangle here forget about it you're not finding this triangle without player lock it just doesn't exist it doesn't incorporate it's not an llc we're not going into an s corp none of the above it's not a sole proprietorship coming up on tax season but because of this it allows you to now find an opportunity that wasn't there and the finish even the goalkeeper movement wasn't enough so again i understand if you look at this you say did he force it a little bit but that's part of this year's meta but at least if you're manually forcing it like you've done here and she peels off do you see that slight peel it's not as much curvature as the previous example, but it is a little, ah, right there, that little curvature. Tiny bit, tiny bit. Let me see, can I zoom in for you? It's almost a sidestep. I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's a slight sidestep, but you did that manually. You did that on your own, and it, it threw off the defender. It threw off the midfielder, and you scored a goal. Lastly, we have player lock baiting. So you got your first pass there. It's been made. Mbappe, you're going to see this a lot in this circumstance. You can attack the space while also being able to take over player lock with both of these players. And when I say baiting, you switch to a player knowing that you're not necessarily going to make that pass. And you do this more or less just to throw off maybe one of the defenders. Can you make one of these guys make a mistake, misstep, overcommit? That's the game plan when you're looking at the bait. You see this is Mbappe. He switched off Mbappe. You see the initial switch to Ginola. But he might not be the early target man. But because this is visible for all, the defensive player, he might get pulled out. He might hesitate. He might second guess. And that's all you're trying to do is can you move these big center backs? Can you move these center defensive midfielders that take up so much space? Can you make them second guess? Just a moment. Gives you more clarity. Goes back to Mbappe. And then you pull the last runner into space. So do you see how many switches that is? Let's run that back. So player lock one, Cafu to Mbappe. You find your gap. Then you go Mbappe to Ginola, but he doesn't actually use Ginola. Goes back to Mbappe, and then you pull, I believe it's Hansen. And Hansen's going to find this little gap here. And it's, it's just more about moving a few players, making your opponent have to adjust, and then looking for that layoff. This is still a difficult pass. Like, I want it all to be said. You're looking for the opportunity to square it. It's not simple. We see the goal a lot, but you still got to fit it through a bunch of defenders that are in the right places, generally speaking. It's just about finding any sort of gap. There it is, and your conversion. I like this example a lot because not only does it score, but it shows you multiple player locks in one sequence and where the pros are even better than the normal people or the good players that are using the player lock well. They're just not able to implement all the bait and switches and fakes and the additional intricacies. One more for the road. I don't think he actually scores a goal here, but I still like it. So you're going to drag a player out of position right here. Look at that center back. He's going with the attacker. You have already pulled these players into this pocket of space. So what is that going to create for you? Well, watch the play unveil. There you go. You now have a new gap in a better place on the pitch. Dead center, Janola. And it's all because you basically have a secondary runner. And this run is a dummy run, but you triggered it. What's more important is that you took the defender with you. So it's less about the dummy run. It's more about the run that took the defender to open up a lane of space and created a gap. If you look at this gap, I mean, this is, this is big material here. At this area of the pitch, you don't get gaps like that to feed your best attacker. I even look at the center mids. They're all out of position. Look at this. They're all standing here, not doing anything. Janola receives, turn, and it's mistimed, actually, which poor, poor finish. But you get what the, the game plan was here. It's a smart way to open up space that didn't exist. Yeah, that would not have existed. If that player doesn't move, so if you don't play a lock here, none of this opens up if you don't play a lock there. None of this opens up. You've got a bunch of bodies. Uh, I would even go as far as saying this player here is going to naturally scoot into that lane of space. So it's never going to be created. But with that pull, a poor manual switch on the defensive end, thinking that the pass is going to be going to this attacker. It doesn't go there. You make your dummy run, which pulls the center back as well. And now you have an opportunity. Love it. Just a bad finish. Those are a few examples. With the player lock in particular, I can go so much deeper. We've seen people use this with crossing, multiple switches. I thought this was a good entry level video to show you how the pros are also utilizing and taking advantage at a high level, but to give you the basics of how to do it, when to do it, what to look for. And it's more about just 
giving you more manual control on the offensive end. You can pull players out of position. You now can find the manual pass across. You can set up your tiki taka or your one twos. There's a lot that you can do here. If it was helpful, make sure to subscribe, like it, get in the comment section. If you have questions, which you likely will, I'm there. I will answer your questions. And we have a lot more content coming out ASAP, ASAP.